My bubbly can says, hey, who are you yelling at? Welcome back to Ancient History, 7th graders, and whoever else is watching this. Today we are moving locations again. We are back on the Greek Peninsula with the Mycenaeans in the... Oh, I left this on the... That's not you guys. Let me get rid of that real fast. This is you. We're in the Dark Age of Greece, which is visiting Greece between the years, once again, 1200 to 1050 BC. Sorry, we're gonna be stuck in this century for a while. So this is while all the things are going down in the region of Mesopotamia, from Asia Minor all the way down to Egypt. Things are falling to itty bitty pieces. And we've talked about things in China and in India, and now we are in Greece. And we're gonna talk about what happens to the Mycenaeans at this time. This is considered to be the Dark Age ages of Greece. And Dark Ages just means nobody wrote anything down, so we don't know anything about what happened. Which means that this whole lecture is a bit of guesswork and conjecture, but you should be used to that by now because that's the nature of ancient history. So here we go. Having left Egypt and Assyria and Babylon and the Hittites and their little muddle of wreckage of wars and everything. Now we are returning to the Greek peninsula. You will remember that there is a culture that exists there called the Mycenaeans and they have numerous cities, including Athens and Sparta and a couple others, and Mycenae, and they are all called together the Mycenaean. The city of Mycenae is part of the Mycenaean culture, which includes several cities. When we last visited the Mycenaeans, they had just gotten done brutally destroying Troy with their beautiful wooden horse, but it was an expensive victory with a long war, which had lasted over 10 years and had drained resources because the people on the mainland of Greece had to send resources to the people laying siege to Troy. When the Mycenaean ships, after defeating Troy, limp back home to Greece, to the mainland, they find that their homes are poor and in trouble. A few different things. Around 1200, the beginning of this era, fires had spread throughout the Greek peninsula and the city of Sparta was burned to the ground. And the city of Mycenae was being attacked by an unknown enemy who didn't manage to make it into the wall, but destroyed all the houses outside the wall and these were never rebuilt. And the city of Pylos was also swept by fire. Written history becomes dark during this period, but archeology span suggests that the Mycenaean cities were settled by a new people group that didn't have any form of writing or skill with building with stones or brick and who also didn't understand bronze work. These settlers came down from the Northern part of the peninsula and historians have called them the Dorians. Hey, that rhyme. Historians and Dorians. I'm so tired. There are two ancient historians, specifically Thucydides, which is pronounced with as many syllables as it looks like, and Herodotus, who has a forgivably pronounceable name compared to his counterpart. Thucydides and Herodotus are ancient historians, but they didn't live during the actual events. They lived closer to the events than we did, but they lived a little later, and they looked back on the Mycenaeans as their ancestors, so they had some interesting interpretations of what actually happened during this period. They claim that the Dorians took over the Mycenaean cities with a great armed invasion. But they were likely probably wrong about that because it seems that they were a little predisposed to think that the Mycenaeans were very strong and almost undefeatable. And so it was inconceivable to these guys that the Mycenaeans could have been overthrown except by some massive invading force. But archaeology doesn't really demonstrate that happening. They demonstrate that the actual invasion or influx of the Dorians was a pretty slow and non-violent process. For instance, the burning of the city of Pylos, uh, which burned, and also the city of Mycenae also burned but they didn't burn close together. They burned about 90 years apart from each other, according to archeology, span which suggests that the Dorian invasions were pretty slow. They trickled into the peninsula over the course of almost a hundred years. So it wasn't like they just hit it, like massively stormed a city and then ran off and massively stormed another one. And there's some other evidence to suggest that it wasn't even that violent, but I'll come back to that. Evidently, the Mycenaeans were too weak to protect themselves against the Dorians, to protect from Dorian 
infiltration. Even though with 90 years of warning between the attacks on these cities, they weren't able to gear up enough protection for themselves against the Dorians. In some cities in the Mycenaean culture, there isn't even evidence of any fighting happening at all. Of course, there are stories of the citizens of Athens fighting with great resistance, but these stories only exist among the Mycenaean cultures and no others. So there is some evidence to suggest that maybe the Mycenaeans were making things look a little better for themselves. What does seem to have happened is that the Mycenaeans seem to have largely left their cities even before the Dorians got there. And we'll discuss why that might be. For instance, the city of Athens, its populations shrunk dramatically. By 1100, 1100, the northeast side of the city of Athens had been abandoned altogether. And Sparta, remember how it was burned? Well, it looks like according to archeological evidence, it was abandoned before it was even burned. So that by the time the Dorians arrived, the Mycenaean cities in the south were pretty much already weak and disorganized. Again, the lack of clear written records from this time period makes it difficult to know what exactly happened. But archaeology is the best we can do with trying to piece things back together. It is evident that the war with Troy definitely contributed to the decay of the Mycenaean cities. Many years of supporting a war going on in a distant location would certainly drain resources. Also, there is evidence that there were several years of bad weather, which reduces the intake of crops. And we already know the trouble that that can cause. Also, remember that the regions from Asia Minor all the way down to Egypt, they're fighting wars on dealing with their own droughts and stuff. So the Mycenaean culture can't ask these guys for help because they're too busy fighting their own battles and dealing with their own droughts and famine. So the Mycenaean cities would start to fight among themselves, almost certainly. When there is no food, people start to fight with each other because you've got to survive. So when the Mycenaean cities start to run out of food due to these bad years of famine, it's very, very likely that they turn against each other as well. One other thing that likely happened, there is evidence that the Mycenaeans who laid siege to the city of Troy were struck by the plague, probably the bubonic plague, because there's evidence that it hit their livestock as well. The Trojans honored Apollo, who is in mythology attributed with being the spreader of illnesses. So the Trojans, when they're watching their enemies being hit by the plague, gave honor to Apollo for inflicting their enemies with illness. Even though the Mycenaeans win the war against Troy, they return to the Greek peninsula, probably still carrying the illness back with them. So to summarize the evils that come to the Mycenaean, plague, drought, and war combined together dramatically weaken the Mycenaean civilization. And when it becomes difficult to live in one place, those who have reasonable health leave to try and find better areas. And this is what seems to have happened to the Mycenaeans as well as to the Cretans and some people who lived on the islands in the Aegean Sea. And they spread away from their homeland in small bands looking for new homes and hiring themselves out as mercenaries. Here's a definition I want you to know is mercenary is a professional soldier hired to serve in a foreign army. So the Mycenaeans, struck by massive calamity, by war, by drought, by illness, by fires, end up leaving their cities in small bands. And in order to find work to do, they hire themselves out as professional soldiers. And the Dorians can sort of infiltrate and take over without having to do much fighting because what remains of the Mycenaean culture is not really that intimidating. It would be the weaker and the less healthy Mycenaeans who would be overrun by the Dorians. Well, we will never know for sure whether or not the Dorians advanced with great military might, even though archeology span suggests otherwise. It is possible that the Dorians did just go in and massively wipe out the Mycenaeans. It's more likely that the Mycenaeans were already weak and mostly gone by the time the Dorians even got there. But we won't know because the Dorians didn't have a king or court or taxes or tributes or foreign sea trade. They farmed and survived and they didn't feel the need to write anything down. Which plunges this era and the Greek Peninsula into a dark age that we cannot explore because there are no written records. And that is a very brief summary of the fall of the Mycenaean culture and the rise of the Dorians. But we will be revisiting the Greek Peninsula soon. And it's one of my favorite locations that I've ever been there, but I really want to go. So if anyone wants to sponsor me, I'll take donations. Anyway, it's one of my favorite locations and it's a birthplace of 
very important people who will influence history forever and even the very way that you are taught school. So don't forget about Greece. Stay rad. I'll see you soon.